And it's going to be Matthew 5 in verse 7. It says, Blessed are the merciful, merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful. What does that mean? Blessed are the compassionate. Blessed are those who have sympathy. Blessed are those who have a desire to take away or remove others' miseries. So these are people who have an attribute or a characteristic of this, okay? So it's not like, oh, you know, every so often I feel nice and I do something nice for somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's not mercy, okay? That's not mercy. This is a part of who you are. This is part of what you do without even thinking about it. It just comes from inside of you. So you're practicing it. You're living it. And it says, uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In other words, we will get back. God will deal with us the same way we deal with others. That's, that's really what he's saying. So if we have these types of attributes within us, which we should, because technically the Holy Spirit's working in us. And giving us the ability to have mercy coming forth from us. Now, there's a gift of mercy. The gift of mercy allows people to um, really be able to work with, you know, different types of people. You know, like um, giving people who are homeless, helping them out, people who are in nursing homes. People like they have a gift of mercy. Nurses and, you know, people who work with people like that. They have to have a gift of mercy. Because it's a compassion that comes from them, right? So that's the gift of mercy. This is the attribute. This is a characteristic that is working with inside of us. So really quick, quick I want to turn to Matthew chapter 25. And, you know, as I'm going through this, it was so crazy because... This is where God starts judging. This is, he's, he's telling the people about at the end of time when he's going to judge, right? And he starts separating the goats from the sheep. And he puts the sheep on his right, the goats to his left. So in Matthew 25, um, verse 31 through 46, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm only going to read one or two verses in here. But Christ is sharing this. And he's talking about that, you know, in, in verse 34, it says, The king will say to those on his right hand, the sheep, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. Who are they? Who are they that are blessed? Who are they that he's saying you are going to inherit the kingdom? That means eternal life, salvation. He was talking to those who he said, you know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And they're like, Lord, when did we do this? And in verse um, 40, it says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. You did it to me. See, the whole point about the gift, about, you know, having the characteristic of mercy is it teaches us how to treat others. And when we have the characteristic of mercy, God takes it personal. God takes it very personal. And as a matter of fact, after this, he talks to the ones that didn't do it. And he is very displeased with them, right? Right? So, in other words, I don't even think they made it. I don't even think they made it. God takes it very serious as to how we treat people. Because he says he separated the sheep from the goat. And then he blessed those that did the right thing. And he cursed those that didn't. Right? Those are the goats. 
So he's talking to them about how to treat people. Jesus was trying to teach them between what was right and what was wrong. And those that will inherit, those that will come to know him in the greatest way possible, you know, the day we come with Christ face to face. But it's so crazy because as, as it goes on, the way he talks about, like the whole Bible tells us how to treat people. You know what I mean? The whole Bible talks to us about it. And so the next story I want to go into is into the parable of the Good Samaritan. So I'm going to turn to Luke chapter 10. And I'm going to start in verse 25. So Luke 10, 25, and it goes on to say, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like these people were always trying to trap him. So this lawyer was actually an expert in the law. Okay, so he was just trying to trip trip up Christ in his wording all the Pharisees all the Sadducees all of them were always trying to ask him questions to try to make it a trick question you know and this is what he was asking but Jesus brought it right back to him well what does the law say (laughs) what does the word say so then he answered and said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself And he said to him, you answered rightly, do this and you will live. See, he had the right answer. He said the right thing. He knew what he was talking about. And Jesus said, exactly. If you do that, you will inherit the kingdom. You will have eternal life. Why? Because when we love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength, We're going to love our neighbor as ourself. That means we're going to do them right. Why? Because we want to please God first. We're not trying to please ourselves first. We're trying to please God first. And because we're pleasing God, we're going to bless the brethren. We're going to bless the people around us. But then Christ, knowing his heart, goes into the parable. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. I mean, imagine this, okay? And today, honestly, we can probably not just imagine it. We probably can't see it. This is somebody who got beat so bad, he was half dead or he would have died. And here these two men, they see him afar on the floor, beat up, and they probably cross the street and keep going. Today... If somebody's on the floor that got ran over by a car or got beat up or something happened, what do they do? The first thing, take out their phones. Are they calling 911? No. Are they all like, oh, my God, what happened? Are you okay? No. They're like, oh, likes, likes. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, that's the first thing that comes to their mind. So today, either they're just going to stand there with their phone And not care about the person on the floor that's hurting. Or they're just going to cross the street and keep on walking. That's what these two did. And then it goes on. And it says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So when he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, as he sat him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. 
So which of these three do you think was, na- was, was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So Jesus Christ shared this parable and then he asked the expert in the law, who do you think showed neighborly kindness? Who do you think showed mercy? And he said, you know, the one that took care of him. He didn't say the Samaritan because remember, they hated Samaritans. They hated him. So God, with all of their questions, with all of their traps, with all of their trying to get around everything, Jesus always puts it right back on them. He always puts it right back. He deals with the issue of the heart. See, Christ brought out this parable because he was dealing the issue of this religious man's heart. Because he brought out two religious leaders. Christ brought out the priest and he brought out the Levite. These are two who worked in the temple. These were two religious people who it was their duty to be showing mercy. It was an obligation of theirs because they know the law. Remember? What, what was his answer? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Christ, in his great wisdom, straight up told him, religiousness makes you cold. Religiousness makes you have the words, but not the actions. You have the words, but you don't have the actions. These two religious leaders were supposed to help him. Because this guy, it doesn't even say he was a Samaritan. It was one of their own. But the one that stopped and helped them was the one that they didn't, you know, that they didn't want nowhere near him. So they were both spiritual leaders. And the Jews and the religious leaders only considered certain people worthy of their help. And that's the sad part. We can become so hard. We can become so legalistic and so just rigid that we think only certain people deserve us. Only certain people deserve help. Jesus was trying to enlighten this man. He was trying to enlighten him as to what God says is right and what God says is wrong. That was the point of this whole story. The point of his story was how wrong it is to mistreat those and be um, a religious person and yet have no mercy. Faith without um, deeds is dead, right? And deeds without faith is dead. So a lot of times in religion, what happens is we get so stuck that we stop doing the deeds to go along with our faith. And a lot of times, if we are doing deeds, it's so cold. (laughs) There is no heart behind it. There is no faith behind it. As a matter of fact, we're only going to do the things that we want to do. We're not going to do any more than that. So a lot of times in Christianity, if we don't have mercy as an attribute or as a characteristic working inside of us, we're going to become like that. We're going to start walking past people and not even care if they're wounded. We're going to walk past people and not care if they're hurt. We're going to walk past people and not give them the time of day because you know what? I'm in a rush. You know what? I got places to do. I got things to do. Um, I don't have time because if I stop and pay attention, now I'm going to get stuck. Now I have to do this. Now I have to do that. We start worrying about what we have to do. And we stop caring about their needs. We stop caring about how they feel and what they're going through and what they're experiencing. We no longer have a heart for others' suffering. We no longer have a heart for others' needs. Physically or spiritually. You know what I mean? Because in the last scripture, 
um, he was talking about the physical needs. In this scripture, he's talking about spiritually. Physically and spiritually, it's our duty. It's our duty to be showing mercy. Now, mercy doesn't mean um, do everything for them. Mercy doesn't mean that now we become their God. No, mercy means we have a heart of compassion. We are still able to be moved by others' problems. And our compassion and the heart that we have is like, man, Lord, um, can I do something for them? Is there anything that I can help them with? Is there anything that I can relieve them with? If not, prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer will carry them through. Prayer will help them because you're really sending the presence of God to them. You know what I'm saying? You're sending prayer, sending the presence of God to lift them up, to help them, to comfort them, to give them what they need in that moment, even if you can't do it. God can. See, but when we lose this compassion, when we lose this mercy, we're always worried about the things we have to do. And if anybody steps in front of us that has a need, now we're like, oh, great. Now you're taking up my time. Now, now you're taking away from my, what I got to go do. Well, what do you got to do? Well, I got to go do my nails. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. Come on. I got to go grocery shopping. Oh, I had to go um, eat food. I had to go do this. I had to go do that. Everything that has to do with you, 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 you. But when you have compassion, I don't care about me. When you have compassion, it's like, you know what, Lord? You obviously put them in front of me. See, because it says that they came upon him on the road. See, you never know when somebody's going to come across you. You never know when somebody's going to come across your path. And God is giving you, putting you in the right place at the right time to be that blessing to them. The one that helped this man was not who should have been putting into action. Mercy is putting scripture into action. That's the thing. We are able to act on our compassion. We're able to do what the scripture tells us. What good is it to quote the scriptures if we're not walking it, if we're not living it? I mean, the Bible says, the devil and the demons know the word and they tremble. They tremble. But they're not doing it. They're not living it. You know what I mean? So just quoting scripture doesn't give us no power. It's living out that scripture. It's being the scripture in real life. You know? So the Samaritan was the one that was considered an outcast. He was considered a nobody, but yet he's the only one that showed mercy no matter what it costed him. No matter what it costed him. He told the innkeeper, here's money. If you need any more when I come back, I'll, give you, I'll, I'll repay you. I'll take care of the bill. He had a heart to take this man out of his misery. But see, when I was thinking about this, isn't that what Christ did for us? Isn't that what Christ did for me and you? He had mercy on our soul. He saw us robbed of our innocence because when sin came into the world, we were robbed of our innocence. God saw us robbed of our innocence because of sin. We were on the side of the road wounded and left for dead. Spiritually, we were in our trespasses. We were dead in sin. We were on the side of the road. We were the nobodies. We were the ones that nobody considered. But yet, God saw us. He picked us up. He healed our wounds no matter the cost. No matter the cost. It costed Christ everything. But yet it did not 
bother him to give it up. It didn't hurt him to give it up. He didn't have to think twice about giving it up. If somebody comes and asks us for, you know, hey, can you help me out and do this for me? And you have two of it and you're like, mm, do I really want to? You know? Do I really want to? If somebody comes and says, I have this need, we think twice about it. But yet Christ didn't think twice when it came to me and you. It costed him everything. And this was the thing. Because of what Christ did, because he's the perfect example of mercy, of what it is to live out mercy, of what it is to do acts of mercy, he straight up said, go and do likewise. Now, of course, we're not going to be able to die on the cross for sins. You know what I mean? We, we are not worthy. Christ already did that. Christ already paid that price. But he's telling us today, He's telling us to live mercy, live it out, have compassion on those around you. Don't only have compassion on the ones you love. Don't only have compassion on the ones that are in your circle. No matter who comes across you, whether you like them or whether you don't like them, it's our obligation to show them mercy. Otherwise, we are like the religious people who are cold, who are rigid, who have no acts of mercy, who have no compassion within their heart. And if we don't do these acts, at the end of time, God's going to be like, you're with the goats. What? You thought you were something because you can quote some scripture? You thought you were something because you sat in church? No, God knows the heart. God knows the depths of our heart. God knows what it costed. God knows what it cost us. See, when we have a heart of mercy, we're going to think of others before ourselves. We're going to love God and love them. See, when we love God, we love him first. Because if we're still loving ourselves first, then we can't love God. <laughs> Because guess what? The only person we're serving is our flesh. We're not serving God. We're serving our flesh. And the thing is, is sometimes it could be us that still fall to the enemy's hands. Sometimes the enemy still um, meets us on the road trying to still rob us. He's still trying to rob your joy. He's still trying to rob your salvation. He's still trying to take away your purpose. He's still trying to take away everything that God's given you. God's trying to take it away, or the enemy's trying to take it away. But yet, God will put somebody on the road to help you out. Let that be us. Let that not be somebody in the world. If the world can show us up. And have more acts of mercy than us. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Why is an outsider, somebody who doesn't even know God, can show more mercy than me? How's that possible? It shouldn't be. Don't let the enemy put you on this road and trap you. But yet if you see your brother or sister hurting and wounded on the road don't just walk past them don't just walk past them because when that's you you're gonna want somebody to pick you up when that's you you're gonna want somebody to take you in you're gonna want somebody to take you to a doctor you're gonna want somebody to bandage you up our God is the greatest physician there is because he doesn't only have the capability and the power to heal us physically, but he also has the power to heal us emotionally. He also has the power to heal us spiritually. No earthly doctor can do that. Not even those psychologists, you know. They'll try to give you um, tactics and they'll try to give you things to try to work through it. But they can't heal your mind. They can't heal your open wounds. They can't heal that. But Jesus Christ can. Jesus Christ can. And when we're on that road, 
And when we're seeing people, because right now we can see a lot of people on that road. They are wounded. Wounded because the world has swallowed them up whole. And then just spit them back out. And they're left, they're left for dead, hurting. Nobody else knows that they're hurting. Nobody else knows that they're on that road about to die. Nobody else sees them. But God put you there. God put you there. And if you have that heart of compassion, it's not going to bother you to pick them up, no matter what you have to go do. Because God's work comes first. God's will comes first. And if the Holy Spirit's working inside of us, the Holy Spirit's going to tell us what's needed. Sometimes it's just a simple word. Sometimes it's just a simple, you know what? They need food. I mean, it's just as simple as that. I mean, some people might milk it. <laughs> some people might milk it, but hey, we love that anyway. You know what I mean? We loved it. That was awesome. But God's people did it. God's people had that. It was in their heart to show that kind of love. It was in their heart to come around them. See, some people, all they need is to feel loved. Some people, all they need is to feel supported. Because all their life, they've been on their own. All their life, they've had to do everything alone. Nobody has ever been there. Their mom and dad were not there. Their family just, you know, left them by the side. Like they didn't worry about them. They didn't bother about them. But yet God brings us a church family. God brings us other people in our life where we feel that support, where we feel that family bond and gives us what we've been desiring all of our life, what we've been seeking all of our life. When we're willing to do things for others, we get to show God's love. We get to show who God is. Because if we don't live this way, if we don't let mercy be something that comes out of us, then we're not doers of the word. We're only hearers of the word. And how are we going to show the world that God's love is effective inside of us? When we only do what's convenient to us. We can't do what's convenient to us. Because picking up this man was not convenient to the Samaritan. Was not convenient because he was hated. He was hated. So in reality, he probably would have got more slack because he helped them. Oh, but not the religious people. The only person that the religious people got slack from was Jesus. <laughs> You know what I mean? Jesus, because he sees the heart. This is why Christ, when he dealt with the religious people, he was hardcore. He was hardcore with the religious people. Because everybody around them were like, ooh, and ah, when it came to them. Every time they showed up to, you know, wherever they were, they were over there like worshiping them. Like they're these amazing people. But yet, Christ, when he showed up on the scene, he's like, you don't impress me. As a matter of fact, I see your heart. I see the way you are. You have no real love. You don't know, um, you don't do the love of God. You don't even do the word of God. So when Christ would always come to these people, he would bring out things that cut the heart. So at the end of it, this religious leader had to see that he was wrong. See, because to him, to love your neighbor meant only love those of my own. But see, Christ gave an example that no, you love those that, that you don't even like. You help those that you would prefer not to ever look at again. <laughs> you help those that even are doing you harm. Why? Because you're showing the love of God. You're showing them 
that the Holy Spirit is working out these matters inside of our heart. And sometimes God might deal with us to do things, and inside we're like, I don't want to do it, and, you know. Like, do you see what they're doing? Do you know who they are? You know what they're going to be doing and saying. And all along, God's just saying mercy, compassion, compassion. Because you know what? Compassion will do one or two things. It's going to put hot coal on their head, and it's going to burn them up, or they're going to take a step back and they're going to say, I don't deserve this. And it's going to soften their heart. And it's going to cause the word of God to be able to come in and you to be able to share the word of God with them. Even if they're another brother or sister, even if they know the word of God, because mercy does wonders to the soul sometimes we're the ones in need of mercy and sometimes we're the ones that need to be giving mercy this is why he said he'll deal with us the same way we deal with others and if we give mercy continuously then that means God's always going to give us mercy I want God's mercy Because I know who I am, and I know how I could be, and I know how needy I can get with him. I don't want to re, I don't want to, um, how do you say, go without that. Because he's always helped me. He's always blessed me. But I don't want to get cold. And sometimes when we're just walking, you know, we just get in this like numb. We get numb, Right? All these things are just coming our way. And then we just become numb. And then all we start doing is just like going. We're not thinking. We're not, you know, we're not intentional about anything. We're just like, whatever. I'm just going. I'm just going to keep doing what I know I'm supposed to do. We give the bare minimum. When we're numb and when we're not in that place, we give the bare minimum. But yet... This Samaritan didn't give the bare minimum. He gave his very best. And when we are doing these things to please God, we're giving our very best to not just each other, but to anybody we come in contact with. Because God sees. God sees us. See, if there was other people looking at these religious people, they probably would have picked them up. They probably would have helped them. And they would have probably taken them somewhere to get help and then just walked away and said, I did my duty. We don't want to do things when people are looking because we want the praise. We want the recognition that we did something amazing. You know, like, did you guys see? I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that and I helped them and I did that and I told them this and I said that. Like, nobody cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when we're just doing it out of our heart, we're not even thinking about anything else except like, man, I, I felt good doing that. That felt awesome. Like, thank you, God, for giving me an opportunity. Lord, help me. Give me another opportunity. I want to keep doing this because it felt good to me. It blessed me. It edified me. I feel pumped. I want to keep doing it because I got to see somebody made whole again. I got to see somebody healed. I got to see somebody's needs met. And it doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. You know, like my sister-in-law told me one time that um, she went to the store and this guy came and asked her for help, you know, to pick out an outfit. It was a man and he had to go to a a baby shower and he don't have no kids and he's like I don't know what I'm doing but it's my friend I got to do something for my friend and so um she helped him and at the end of it he blessed her with money and she's like no 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 like I, I don't need that I mean I was just doing something nice and he said no please take it I asked four other people and nobody even looked at me nobody even paid attention to me this man was so grateful 
that he wanted to bless her. See, and that's what Christ is telling us. When you see a need, and when you see somebody in need, just do it. Meet the need. And when you meet the need, God rewards you. God blesses you. God takes care of you. Why? Because you blessed his heart. Because you took care of these least of ones. The one that everybody's just walking past. Because you're the only one that saw them. God said, you took care of me today. We have stopped. We need to stop looking at people like, ugh, people. You know what I mean? I mean, me. I need to stop doing that. It's like, ugh, people. They're so annoying. <laughs> you know? People are annoying. And it's true. They are annoying. But I can't have the heart to... Ugh, you're bothering me. You know, you're in my way. I have to soften my heart and I have to allow God to just do whatever he wants to do with me today. To bless his heart and stop thinking about me, you know, and stop trying to always be in a rush to take care of what I need to take care of. Sometimes we miss opportunities like that because we're not even looking at people. We're not looking around. We're not being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we forget that Christ did the same for me. And therefore, because I'm so grateful, I have a desire to go and do that for others. And the more I do it, the less harder it is. You know, the more you want to bless people. So today, let's remember to have a heart of compassion. So that we don't get cold and religious. So that we're able to be the example of God's love here on earth. Amen.